world where every system update can contain millions of lines of code, the real question is not what we install, but why we trust it. When we type APT upgrade or DNF update, we are implicitly declaring trust in a vast and complex distribution system. But what makes this system trustworthy? One word, keys. Every software package in a Linux distribution is digitally signed with a private key. Users don't see this signature, but their operating system verifies it every time they install or update something. If the signature is valid and the public key is in the system's key ring, the installation proceeds. Otherwise, it is blocked. This is the core of the trust system. But what does this process actually involve? When a developer creates a package, they sign it using their private GPG key. The system you're running contains a collection of trusted public keys. If one of them matches the signature and validates it, the system knows the package hasn't been tampered with. Even a single altered byte would break the signature. To understand how these signatures work, the private key is like a unique stamp that only the developer possesses. Once applied to the package, it can only be verified by the matching public key. This ensures that the software truly comes from who claims to have published it. Serious distributions like Debian, Fedora, or Arch Linux implement a robust and redundant system for managing keys. Keys are stored offline, often on air gap devices or HSMs, hardware security modules. Key rotation is planned and documented. A special package, such as Debian Archive Keyring, contains active keys, future keys, and even revoked ones. Key updates happen within packages already signed with valid keys, ensuring a secure transition. These keyring packages are at the core of the trust mechanism. When a new key is introduced, it comes through a package update, one that is itself already signed with a previously trusted key. This keeps the chain of trust intact and allows distributions to phase out old keys while securely introducing new ones. Debian is probably the best example of good practice. Its keys are managed by a group, not by isolated individuals. There's a web of trust among developers. Keys are signed and verified across multiple levels. The transition processes are publicly documented and every step is transparent. This makes a total loss or compromise extremely unlikely. And if a key is compromised or lost, even in that case, a well-organized distribution has everything planned. Public revocation of the old key, issuance of a new key signed by the previous one if still available, automatic update of the key through a package signed with the old one, public communication via website, change log, mailing lists, and social media. This is what sets a serious distribution apart, the ability to manage unforeseen events securely and transparently. Another powerful technique used to enhance trust is the concept of reproducible builds. This means that if you, I, or Debian servers compile the same source code, we all get exactly the same binary output, byte for byte. If the resulting binaries differ, something is wrong. This is one of the strongest defenses against hidden tampering in the supply chain. This brings us to the Kali Linux case. This distribution, designed for security, recently lost its repository key. Instead of an automatic and secure update, users were asked to manually download and install the new key. A serious mistake, because it breaks the chain of trust. If a user downloads the key from a compromised source, the whole system can be at risk. A security-focused distribution cannot afford such basic failures. It must follow the same best practices as the major distros. Secure backups, planned rotation, automatic updates, transparent communication. This incident made me reflect and led to the creation of this technical video, which will be followed by another one where I'll explain my project, the DTI Index, an index that measures the transparency of Linux distributions, analyzing governance structure, policy accessibility, financial data, development code, and other parameters. Many Linux distributions are amateur projects, managed in a completely artisanal way and lacking any advanced structure for handling critical situations. These are small, approximate projects maintained by a few people. And that's completely normal in the open source world. But what's not normal is that many users are unaware of this and place professional and robust systems like NixOS on the same level as weaker ones like Zorin OS. We must be able to distinguish between serious distributions, those capable of becoming our main system where we can entrust our digital life, our work, and our personal data 
and those that are just for fun or testing. Nothing more. And Kali is not the only case showing the limits of superficial management. In 2024, a Debian engineer, Andres Freund, discovered an anomaly in SSH behavior on updated systems. After a thorough investigation, he uncovered a hidden backdoor in Libelsma, part of the XZ tool, used in nearly all Linux distributions. The malicious code had been slowly and subtly inserted by Jia Tan, a new maintainer who, over years, gained trust in the open source community, eventually becoming the sole manager of the project. The backdoor was sophisticated, hard to detect, and already present in beta versions of Debian and Fedora. This case showed that even open source can be manipulated from the inside and reinforced the importance of audits, reproducible builds, and distributed trust. And if even serious, solid, and highly professional distributions like Debian and Fedora are at risk, then weaker and inconsistent structures are wide open doors into our digital lives, personal data, and assets. Here is the true takeaway. Security doesn't lie in the tools a distro offers, but in its infrastructure. It doesn't matter if you use Kali for penetration testing. If your system receives packages from a poorly managed repository, you are already vulnerable. And just because a distro is used for penetration testing doesn't automatically mean it's secure. There are other, far more important parameters to consider. Keys are invisible, silent, but vital. They are what hold up the entire castle of free software. And like any castle, if the foundations fail, everything collapses. Let's always ask ourselves, does the distribution we use truly deserve our trust? And let's not look only at the interface or the tools. Let's look at how it manages the key that signs everything entering our systems. In a world where software runs everything from governments to personal diaries, the real defense isn't just encryption, it's transparency. It's the ability to verify. It's the culture of scrutiny and the courage to demand better. Because only in a system that allows us to see clearly can we truly trust what's hidden inside. And let's remember, a key is not something you lose. It's something you protect. Period. As you can see from the preview of the report I'm showing on Debian, the organization of this distribution, at every level, simply radiates transparency. It's no coincidence that Debian is one of the oldest Linux distributions still active today. And it's certainly no coincidence that the Debian project represents practically the foundation of the entire Linux distribution ecosystem, with more than 50% of all distros deriving from it. There are no holes, no benevolent dictators, no rogue hackers. There is a community that has set clear values and built an organization around those values, one that efficiently and pragmatically drives software development and distribution on a global scale through collaboration, democracy, and expertise. This has led to extraordinary levels of community, transparency, and trust. That, too, is part of security. And if I had to entrust my digital life to someone, I would think a thousand times before choosing anyone other than Debian or the very few other distributions that, even with slightly different organizational models, show the same level of transparency. Transparency matters. And yet, I notice that many of us often overlook it when choosing a distribution. Thank you for watching.